Hello, it's Desiree, and right now you're watching a speed paint of me do my newest digital piece called uh, Serifix Poison. Um, it's on my website and like on my Instagram, and you can like read more about it. Um, but yeah, uh, so I did this piece in my sketchbook first. Like I sketched the piece in my sketchbook, and then I colored it digitally. Um, I don't really remember any actual reason why I did that. I think I just, like, I sketched it really small and poorly in my sketchbook, and, but I knew I kind of wanted to make it an actual piece, so that's kind of why I did that. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. Um, so I think one of the biggest strengths of this piece is my color palette, I guess. I guess that's what I would call it. Um, I, I don't really know how... I got to this color palette like I'm not that good at coloring honestly like well at least I used to not be that good at it but I'm getting a lot better at it but this color palette is like way better than my color palettes usually are and I think I, I just kind of like guessed a lot more like like I don't think I knew how it was supposed to be but I kind of had an idea of what I wanted and I just kind of took a bunch of guesses at how it was going to end up and it turned out really well like like, it turned out better than things usually turn out, um, but yeah, like, especially in the skin and the skin tones, like, I really just kind of took wild guesses and hoped for the best, like, uh, especially in the shadows and stuff, like, especially those, uh, those, uh, tree shadows, like, those, those, like, leaf shadows, like, it has some reference, but it's not like they're, like, purple leaf shadow references, like, I just kind of took a guess as at how, like, how they would, like, work as, like, purple shadows, and I don't think purple shadows even particularly make sense, but it works in this piece because that's, like, the darkest color, and it makes sense for it to be the shadow, you know? Um, you can see that I was on Pinterest, and I did make references, not make references, I looked at references, but it's not like I was looking at references as I was drawing it, it's more like I was trying to find references that match it. And that's kind of hard. Like, that's kind of really hard to do, honestly. Um, to, like, find a reference that kind of matches your pose. But, I don't know. I find that better than me trying to find the reference to draw from. Like, I find it a lot easier for me to, like, draw and then, like, find the reference to, like, try to match what I'm doing. Because if I try to, like, find a reference to draw from then all of a sudden, like, I, I feel, like, constrained to that reference, and, like, I shouldn't be trying to change it, you know? Like, like instead of drawing him like this, I, I, if I, like, looked up a reference of somebody, like, sitting on a tree, I would try to draw them in the same pose, because I, I feel like I wouldn't know how else to draw them. So, yeah, like, I kind of make my own thing up first, and then I kind of look at references after, and I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's how I do it. Um, yeah, but he does look really kind of terrible sitting on that tree. Um, yeah, like, I, I tried to look up tree references and all of that sort of stuff, and all of that kind of looked terrible. Like, I don't know, like, it, like the tree is, like, my least favorite part of this, mostly because it doesn't look right to me. Um, but yeah, another part of this that's, like, really, really... A pain in the butt in general is just the background like the trees in the mid ground with the character and then there's those like leaves in the foreground that you see but then there's like all that stuff in the background like there's like the mushrooms and like all of those things and like I kind of was really focused on the character and I didn't realize how long it would take me to like render those those things and when I was in the process of rendering them I realized that what I was doing didn't make sense. Like, rendering those mushrooms and those leaves and all that, like, that doesn't particularly make any sense because they're, like, in the background. Like, they shouldn't have as much detail as the character in the midground and, like, the things in the foreground. But I was giving them as much, if not more, detail. And that doesn't make any sense because of atmospheric perspective and the way that things work when they go in the background and like I had already finished 
the mushroom and the leaves and like one of the flowers before I really even thought about how that would work. And yeah, so I thought about how that would work and in the end I ended up like fogging up the whole background and putting a lot of like uh stuff in it to try to bring all of that back a lot. And I also used uh more sort of painting techniques, like paint techniques to sort of uh, add interest and detail and like colors and stuff. And that worked out really, really well. Um, that's going to come up pretty soon, actually. But that's kind of how I finished the piece because otherwise I would be still doing the background because there would be so much detail in the background. And I like I remember I kind of wanted the background to be detailed and I wanted the whole thing to be very detailed and you know, like, really fun, and, like, wow, I'm an illustrator, but honestly, that didn't make any sense, like, I, I just wasn't thinking about how things would work if you're actually in this place, and they wouldn't work with everything being super, super, super precise, um, but yeah, when I did all of that fogging up, and when I did all of those, like, extra paint details that you're about to see, um, it kind of pushed the piece way more into surrealism, which I really, really like. Like, he doesn't really look like he's in a real place, and, like, all of those, like, paint details don't make any sense, and they're, like, really cool, and, yeah, like, it, it kind of pushed it way more into a super aesthetic piece, and I love that. Like, it was so fun, like, and, and, like, did I, like, mess with the colors a lot, and that, like, brought it out a lot more, and it just... Yeah, like, it, it made me excited about it, and, like, I'm excited about it still, like, it was, it was good, like, <laughs> it was really good, like, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, but this is easily the best digital piece I've ever done, by far, hands down, and still, like, one of my favorite pieces I've ever done, honestly, um, I just finished an oil painting, and it was really good, but, like, I like this more, like, it makes me excited, and, like, I don't know. I don't want to be like, it's so good. Because that kind of sounds really into myself. But it's, it's more like I push myself to do something different with, like, sort of painting digitally. And sort of treating it more like traditional painting. And it paid off. And it paid off, like, well. Like, I really love it. Um, Yeah. And I don't know. I, I can also just see my, like, digital rendering skills getting better. And that's always so, so fun. Like yeah um yeah and yeah in the end here you can see me messing with colors a lot and you know like fidgeting with things i uh changed the space up a little bit because it didn't look like it made any sense um um yeah i've been doing like quite a few profile views actually so i'm getting better at that too so yeah yay improvement I was going to go in and make the foreground more detailed, but I was, like, so over it at this point. I was like, no, I am so sick of drawing these leaves and drawing these, like, details in the foreground. So I was like, yeah, I just put fog on everything. Fog and colors and a bunch of brush strokes. And yeah, um, yeah, so that's kind of pretty much the whole piece. Um, I really wish I could make prints, but I don't really know how at this point. But one day, I'll make prints, and I'll be able to print this out and just hang it on my wall. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Follow my Instagram and my website for more details and stuff. Love you. Bye.